The reason I wanted to start my farm is there's a saying, the wound is the cure. When I bought this t first 23 acres, I had the rude awakening of finding out that Oregon is, is not full of water. <laughs> so uh, I learned early on after attempting to drill four wells and then learning how to witch my own well and then finding barely a gallon and a half a minute, that changed my idea of what was underneath the ground. A farm's success often depends upon its supply of fresh water. In times of extreme drought and extreme flood, the ability to capture and store water keeps the land in balance, even when the weather isn't. The year before at Tabula Rasa Farms, we embarked on the first part of a grand plan to build a series of features which would enhance the beauty and water security of the site. The natural swimming pond and terraces worked out great, but they only scratched the surface of what we had planned. This summer, our mission was to create a second water body that would provide for the needs of animals and orchards by capturing the extreme seasonal rains. We also set out to repair erosion zones across the farm so the water could gently pass over the surface and infiltrate into the land. Over the course of an intense month, our team pulled off some impressive feats of earth repair. And now, I'm excited to share the results. To help realize Brenda's vision for the farm, we needed to transform how the landscape received and conserved water. Brenda needed year-round water for animals, trees, crops, and recreation. The first step of this was to capture the extreme rain in the winter and store it in a large stock pond. This water feature was our main project and would become a centerpiece for the farm. To build the water feature, first we needed to see the soil composition we were working with. While digging a test slice, we found a deep layer of clay with a moist permeable layer with springs above. So on the original site consultation, we did all of our test slices to see what the material we would be working with in the different locations. And so that really showed us that we had a lot of good clay material here, a lot of material that's going to be good for holding on to the water and that resulted in this siting for the pond. With the good results of the test slice, we could then proceed to maximize the shape of the pond to hold as much water as possible. The main feature of any well-built pond is the key of the dam. It has to be watertight and the strongest structural point of the entire water feature. To do this, we first dug a trench down to our deep clay layer and then filled it with clay. For days, we built up the key and tightly compacted it until we could drive over it with heavy machinery. With the dam constructed, we could focus on expanding the shape of the stock pond to gently capture and hold as much water as possible. There had to be shallow zones where cows could walk in to drink, but zones deep enough to hold oxygen-rich cool water throughout the year. The last features we constructed were the spillways. These are essential to provide areas where the water can safely enter and exit the pond without causing any erosion. Using a water body constructed in this way, the extreme rainfall can be planned for, becoming a benefit to the land, helping to recharge aquifers and providing water for both the farm and wildlife throughout the year. After three weeks of construction, we had completed the second water feature for the farm, and we were excited to see how it would transform the land in the months to come. Eight months after building the stock pond, the results speak for themselves. After a few months of winter rain, the stock pond was already full. It was functioning beautifully. Despite the extreme heavy rains that fell that year, the water was captured in the pond from above and gently flowing into the terraces below. The water feature had transformed a dry, dusty hillside into an ecological oasis for the surrounding animals and plants, and it will continue to help the farm in the years to come. Apart from the stock pond, we also created earthworks in other parts of the farm. These earthworks help improve the function of the land, turning problem areas into assets. One of the biggest challenges of the project was a site we affectionately named the Ash Hole. In this area, the erosion was so extreme from heavy rain that what should be a gentle downhill grade 
was an eight foot drop causing severe erosion. To repair this catastrophe, we had to go inside this poison oak infested gash in the land and create a series of water steps that would repair the erosion and slow the water as it flowed downhill. To build this, we first had to reshape the area and then add wood braces and stakes from fallen trees on site. With the help of an excavator, we sunk stakes vertically and horizontally into the soil to create a series of steps and then created structures around the sides so that the soil would remain in place. So here what we've got going on is a mixture of beaver mimicry and erosion mitigation. This is an area where this ash tree actually sunk about eight feet over a couple of years in elevation. Because this area was dredged in the past, the water's just been carrying sediment with it and emptying out this hillside. And there was about a 10 foot ledge there. So we made a nice rock armored spillway for it to come down. And then we made this section for the water to drop its sediment and then passively flow on downstream. We succeeded in repairing a major erosion zone on site. Eight months later, when we came back to visit, we saw how the water was gently slowed down as it ran softly through the structures we had created. It became a place to enjoy instead of a problem to stress over. Another water feature we improved from the year before was the natural swimming pond. Though the water body was working wonderfully the year after we built it, there were little improvements we wanted to add that would help its form and function. First, we added more plants around the edges of the pond. These rushes, sedges, lilies, and other aquatic plants would protect the structure of the pond and help filter out nutrients and sediments in the water, while also creating habitat for frogs and dragonflies as they grew. So here you can see it's pretty well established with plants. It's providing a lot of habitat for beneficial insects. Every day, all sorts of forms of wildlife are coming to drink this water. Different birds, different deer. When you start to hold water, you give it not just for the landscape and the farming operation, but for the ecology at large. After we added the plants, we added a pump to help circulate the water through the waterfall we had created the year before. With this added feature, the water would now circulate every day to help keep oxygen levels high even through the long, hot summer. Now, the sound of flowing water fills the area, providing a sense of peace and tranquility. This project was a great test for our growing crew. We worked long hours, we slept in tents, we were brutalized by poison oak, but by the end of the project, we all felt satisfied by what we had created. The intensity of the work made the moments in between that much better, and it gave us space to think of the projects to come. We spent one month at Tabula Rasa Farms, carrying out the second phase of our master plan to improve the water retention across the entire landscape. And when we returned, we witnessed firsthand how the new water kickstarted an ecological transformation. The animals and plants had more secure sources of water, the wildlife had a refuge on the farmland, and the people who called this farm home had new places to enjoy. The upside about this work is that it's never finished. We'll be back next year, and when we do, we'll be building even more earthworks and water features. Some people lose hope for the future because they can't see the potential to repair the land and the environment we've lost. They can't see a way that we can actually bring back the water this work is the antidote to despair, and it's a beacon of hope for the future. Because if any landscape can be transformed into an ecological oasis, then we might just be able to repair the world we've lost and make our own lives better in the process. <laughs>